Hello everyone, I'm Tim Spector from Zoe with all the latest updates for you from the app and our scientific research. I'm sorry it's been a while since we've had a chat, but we've been super busy. I've been doing my book and promoting uh, gut health and Zoe has been very busy with all its activities and uh, health tracking, etc. But I'm going to be sharing the latest updates on COVID, including a few tweaks to the way we calculate cases and giving an idea what the latest uh, rates of infection are like and the latest symptoms, as unbelievably, we are approaching nearly three years of working together to uh, improve the nation's health. And I've also got some fascinating updates for you about the habit tracker feature in the Zoe Health Study and which habits seem to be performing best in the first few weeks of the year. But let's dive into COVID because I know a lot of you are interested in what's happening. And the latest data show about 63,000 new cases a day. The rates actually hit the lowest point for about 14, 15 months a couple of weeks ago. And whilst these numbers are still pretty low, we are seeing a, a big increase in the last week, 39% we estimate as rates start to come up again from this lull. So it looks like February is uh, going to be quite different to January and uh, see um, increasing COVID and probably flu and uh, colds again. The, the R value has gone up to 1.1. And just looking at the, the, the trends, it looks like this is going to peak sometime towards the end of the month. And we did predict this uh, back in December. And it's quite nice that sometimes these predictions come true, although not so good if you're getting COVID. Um, so we will be tweaking the numbers in your app to make sure they update in the next few days. Um, so be aware of these subtle changes, but I'll explain a bit later. But let's uh, go back to these uh, graphs. And of course, the reason for these changes, again, you can blame the children. Uh, they're the ones who always get infections first. They seem to be driving both the drop and the increases. Uh, as you can see from this graph, they always sleep about um, a week before anyone else and they're going up at the moment, and that's what's driving the uh, other age groups going up. And of course, the other factor is, is the cold weather, which tends to drive us indoors, and viruses definitely prefer, prefer that. Um, briefly mention uh, our updated methods that we've got for, for looking at cases. And we noticed that over the last few months, since the government stopped giving out free COVID tests and the process of getting a test or not was a bit more random, uh, our rates have started to diverge from the systematic ONS survey, which incidentally costs a um, hundred times more than our study, um, but does uh, get accurate surveys. Um, these we, we have recalculated ours, uh, calibrated the predictions, which based on their data, which means that we're getting lower but more accurate estimates. And as always, we can deliver these much faster to you than the government can. So you're getting this data seven to 10 days uh, before anyone else does. And we're going to be publishing a, a blog and a website for those uh, more scientifically inclined to if they want to find out more. But why are things going up again? One of the reasons is COVID variants. Uh, they are starting to change after a long time of stability with Omicron BA5. The UK HSA shows that COVID rates are mainly made up of a, a, a variant of BA5, a sort of sub lineage called BQ1, behaving broadly the same. Um, but there's a couple of interesting ones to look out for. Um, CH 1.1 and XBB 1.5 appear to be growing more rapidly in the UK. Both are variants again of Omicron and XBB 1.5 is on track to become the dominant variant in the US. And 
was probably also the one responsible for a big spike in cases in Singapore. We don't really know what's going on in China. Um, so what makes XBB more infectious? Um, well, it's got six differences on its spike protein from uh, that maybe helps it get around the Omicron vaccine strain used in the booster. And there may be other things that we don't know about it, but for, for something to be successful, it's got to get around our immune system or actually be more infectious. And we predict that these CH1.1 and XBB 1.5 are likely to take over from BQ1 in the UK unless something uh, strange happens with some other variants. But the good news is none of the virologists are particularly worried that these are dramatically cause for concern, just incrementally uh, slightly more infectious, but no evidence that they are any more severe uh, than we've had in the past. Um, and as always, we've got the as COVID symptoms, thanks to your logging, really uh, in hand. And this familiar list of the top 20 symptoms hasn't really changed much in the last um, few months. Sore throat is still uh, the number one, 57% of cases reporting this. And this is followed by runny and blocked nose and sneezing. And really, you can't really tell it from cold symptoms. What uh, is not so similar to flu symptoms is basic flu doesn't even make the top 20. So it's less than one in 10 people are getting any sort of fever uh, at all. And that uh, signifies this increased differentiation between uh, COVID and flu. So it's much more likely if you've got really bad fevers that you've, um, you've got a flu virus rather than COVID. Um, so far, our amazing 80,000 of you have signed up to track your health habits this year on a daily basis. And this is part of our drive to, in January, just to see how we can nudge people's health in the right direction. And the most popular habit we're tracking so far of all the ones we asked you to pick from is increasing your daily activity. So a quarter of you are trying to incorporate 20 minutes of activity into your daily routine and tell us how you're getting on. Now, the other ones um, we know from the big if study that uh, fasting windows are really important. A lot of you are still doing that. We're going to be reporting on that later. But uh, eating within a 12 hour window, 15% of you doing that, 15, 14% doing deep breathing. And the one I like is 12% uh, of you are trying to eat more plants every day. And this is my favorite because it's got a huge benefit for your gut health trying to get up to 30 plants a week. And um, we're not asking you to do that. It's just add unprocessed plants that you wouldn't normally eat to your diet every day. And remember, these are nuts, seeds, beans, herbs, whole grains, vegetables. Even better if they're plants you haven't already eaten that week. Variety, diversity is absolutely the key. And we've got some interesting stats. Um, we asked, you to rate on a scale one to 10 how your new habits affect your uh, health, things like mood, energy, hunger, sleep, etc. And from these uh, reports, you can see over three weeks that um, the those of you uh, uh, eating more plants experienced up to 10% of improvement in energy and mood. And although it was quite hard the first week to maintain this, you found that it got easier into the third week. And what is good is that 78% of you seem to be able to do this longer term. And this is what we're trying to do. No point. I mean, it's interesting to see how you get on for a week or two. But the point is, can you nudge your habits to last years? And that's what we're trying to do here. So it's nothing dramatic, but making sure that it actually lasts. Uh, in contrast, you know, I've been a advo big advocate of sleep is really important for your nutrition and uh, general health. Go to bed earlier, 30 minutes earlier. A lot of people signed up for that, but uh, quite a lot of you have given up. It's really quite tough. So, uh, so all these habits will vary in a very personalized way. Some find it harder, some find it more easy, but it's not too late to sign up for our 
Zoe Habit Tracker. Uh, it's, it's on that free app. And uh, do feel free to share it with friends and family to get the word out, to get more people on it. So in conclusion, um, COVID numbers after reaching the lowest point for about 15 months are on the up again, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Do expect to see this continued increase throughout February. And I think this means that we just have to increasingly go back to being a bit careful about uh, socializing as much as you can outdoors, keep your hands clean, wearing a mask in very crowded places, still useful tips uh, as ever. Symptoms are really marginally the same though, but if you are getting a fever, um, this is much more likely to be a flu uh, than a cold or COVID. Um, please keep logging your uh, symptoms and uh, help as it detects hot spots in illness in your local areas. Uh, way before the government can give you that data. And um, adding a few plants to your uh, weekly diet is going to improve your immune system. So even if you're not enjoying our uh, habit tracker, you can try some of these tips, which uh, are in, we talk about in Zoe and also in my books. Um, hopefully, um, we'll give you some more updates as they come in on COVID or these uh, exciting studies from the community science we're doing together uh, and do that soon. Do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe, more people get to see it. It gets the word out. It's really helpful to us. Share the app with friends and family. And finally, support science and keep logging. <laughs>